Howdy folks, I wanted to make this, uh, you know, more personal, casual video where you're actually seeing me for once uh, to address uh, something I've seen in the comments recently. There's a particular comment uh, that uh, you're seeing right now that just asks, uh, can I ask how you learned this much about nicer data processing? Because I too need to learn that for my project. Apparently your videos are incomplete for me. This kind of made me uh, think back to some of the other comments I've seen where individuals are asking uh, questions like these ones that you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, where they're asking about specific errors or issues or data reduction with regard to other missions. And I'd like to just take a few minutes here to explain uh, or, or, or to answer uh, the question of how I learned nicer data processing and how I learned, uh, you know, how to do things in astronomy and astrophysics. Um, and also uh, kind of explain why the videos, the, the HESARC or HESOFT, or, or really any of the astrophysics videos I do for that matter, are meant to be somewhat incomplete, at least the tutorial videos anyway. They're, they're, they're sort of meant to be incomplete to a certain extent, or they always will be. Um, so to, to answer the, the, the first kind of question here, how did I learn, uh, to do things in astronomy or nicer data processing? Uh, yeah, we actually have to go back to 2018. In 2018, I was a student and I needed to do research work, uh, you know, to get my degree as every student needs to do. So I joined a theory group, uh, studying neutron stars, a neutron star theory group. I knew I wanted to study neutron stars. I knew I liked them. I knew I was interested in, in neutron stars. And I, so I joined this theory group. Now my advisor, uh, she's been doing neutron star theory for many, many years, but she also uh, had a few individuals who uh, had branched out and started doing things in AGN and whatnot. And so while she didn't necessarily have a ton of uh, experience with uh, observation, she started sort of uh, moving into uh, combining theory and uh, observation. And so for, for many months, I was just learning neutron star theory. And then she said, okay, well, there's this new mission, NICER. It's primarily, you know, going to be to study uh, neutron stars. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm reading so many different papers combining observation and theory. Uh, and I think it's really useful. I want you to learn how to work with NICER data and uh, in particular, see if NICER has observed these particular sources and see if uh, the data is good enough where we could do, you know, like X, Y, or Z. I don't want to go into details about the exact methodologies or what we were trying to do just because that's going to make this go on much longer than I necessarily want it to. And I, we, that can be a, another topic or another discussion for another day. So please let me know in the comments if, you, if you'd like me to, to talk about that. So, yeah, back in 2018, I started learning how to work with NICER and do NICER data reduction. Now, at the time, NICER was not even uh, a year old. If I recall correctly, NICER was launched in June of 2017. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it was June of 2017. I knew it was, I know it's sometime in 2017. Uh, but NICER was a newer mission. And uh, being that I was working in a theory group, uh, there wasn't really too many people to give me a lot of help. I was very reliant on the documentation that was available uh, with NICER, uh, or, or on the NICER homepage, rather. Now, uh, two individuals in the group that were doing more AGN stuff, uh, you know, were more well-versed in XMM Newton and Suzaku, and even a little bit with New Star, which actually... They helped me out a little bit with in some work I did with Newstar. But uh, f for NICER uh, and uh, RXTE, actually, which I ended up having to learn a little bit later on, uh, I was pretty much on my own to learn that. And so I was stuck with the documentation that's available uh, on the different uh, pages hosted with eSoft or, or eSARC. And I basically taught myself how to work with NICER and work with RXTE. Mainly, you know, obviously we're just talking about NICER right now, though. Uh, just by going through and reading the documentation and trying things over and over and over again, just you know, metaphorically banging my head against a wall until eventually I made a dent in it. And what I mean by that is, 
I would just try different commands, and I would screw things up constantly, and eventually I, something different would happen, and I'd say, okay, well, what, what happened differently? And I would go in, and I'd have to see whether or not uh, you know, the reduction that was taking place is what I wanted or what was supposed to be happening. And, you know, that was a struggle in of itself because I didn't even necessarily know what I was, you know, supposed to be doing. And I, I just kind of had to figure things out per the documentation. And and that, that went on for for quite a while. I mean, the that, that original uh, data analysis guide uh, that has changed a lot uh, is really, uh, you know, in burned into my brain because I was constantly just rereading the same documentation over and over again, trying different things and failing and just learning in that way. Okay. You know, and, and that's not to say I didn't get any help from the group because with some of the more spectrum related things we were interested in, I remember extracting a uh, spectrum and then going in and, uh, and saying, Oh yeah, I have a spectrum. And, uh, you know, one of the other research scientists in the group, uh, uh, went ahead and and he was like, okay, well, do you, you know, did you group it correctly? Do you have the you know respective response files? And at that point in time, there wasn't a way to generate response files. There wasn't even the generic response files that you could just go and download, or at least I couldn't find them. And uh, you know, then I quickly learned about the issue of well, there's no response files, so very quickly that that spectrum uh, work was put on hold. And you know, just throughout the process, uh, with the little bit of information I had, I decided eventually that I would record some video tutorials because uh, I was really just reliant on the documentation uh, to go ahead and, and learn this stuff. Uh, so the, the video tutorials I made are, were really just meant to be a bit of baseline uh, information. They were just meant to be... Uh, tutorials to kind of get you moving in the right direction because for me it was a lot of just figuring out am I doing something correct uh, luckily for me uh, things ended up working out the way that I, that I wanted to I eventually uh, you know eventually the nicer data analysis threads came out and more documentation came out as as the mission continued on and and new documentation still continues to come out and uh, you know Eventually, I ended up finding the nicer help desk, and for certain problems that I was, you know, constantly coming across and I couldn't really find answers to, I was able to ask those questions to the nicer help desk email. Uh, I can't, if I can find that email, I will put it in the description, but I, I uh, you know, I, before recording this, I couldn't necessarily find it. But that was particularly helpful. And then last year, Actually, after I'd had a number of years of experience, you know, at least three years working with uh, nicer data, nicer data analysis, there was a webinar or like a data analysis, like web conference or something like that. It was on Zoom. I attended all the days. It was a, it was a week long thing. And uh, the first two days, they just went over basic data reduction. That was a really good opportunity for me to look back at you know, a number of years of working with nicer data and realizing, oh, hey, I was actually, you know, doing this stuff right all along uh, as I figured out kind of as I went along. You know, at, at this point now, I am graduated. I have my degree in physics uh, and I, I did some, a bunch of work with nicer and RxTE and actually I still continue to do that, you know, for reference to, to, to everyone. Or for full disclosure, I am not part of academia. I'm not affiliated uh, with any, you know, university or anything like that. Even though I'm wearing a university uh, a sweatshirt here, uh, I'm not affiliated with 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 this university or or any other university. Uh, nor is my work even within the realm of astronomy and astrophysics anymore. Although I still continue to do this research as an independent, I really enjoyed the research work that I did. Uh, studying neutron stars and pulsars, magnetars, supernova remnants, those kinds of things. And I continue to do that in my spare time. I, I, you know, whenever I'm not at work, I'm generally at home behind a computer working on uh, and doing some kind of astronomy uh, type research. I don't want to say astrophysics because in the way I'm doing things right now, it's much more so astronomy. Uh, but um, I don't want anyone to get any, you know, 
bad ideas about this because it's still something I very much enjoy, you know, where some people will go to a, a football match or go to a bar or go uh, see a movie. I will sit at home and do this research because I'm interested. I'm interested in exploring it and I've gained the tools now to go ahead and, um, and kind of do, do the work as I, as I am interested in doing it. I can explore the different things I want to do. Now to, to kind of comment or answer on, uh, the question of, or not really the question, but to kind of comment on why these videos are always going to be incomplete is I've never really made the, first of all, I've never really made them to be complete. All right. Uh, what you will find as you go through and learn a lot more about, uh, doing astronomy and astrophysics work is that you may think that the area of research you're working in is very, very narrow, but in fact, it is incredibly broad. Uh, all of them are really incredibly broad, especially in the case of neutron stars. I walked in thinking it was very narrow, and there's a wide variety of works going on. And depending on what you know, you're know you trying to do or what you're trying to study, there are going to be very different data reduction processes. You know, for, for reference, most of my work actually is timing related. So spectrum stuff, I'm not super well versed on, at least with respect to NICER. I'm a lot more well versed with that. Uh, with respect to working with new star data, okay? And even even with that, I, I'm by no means an expert, you know? So uh, it's it's quite difficult, and I, and I learned quite quickly, it's quite difficult for me to uh, make a very well-rounded, complete tutorial. The best that I could really do, uh, and the best I really can do, is give you as much general information as I can so that then you can go ahead and learn uh, you know, what is out there and, you, you know, maybe just kind of have a stepping stone, if you will, to doing the actual data reduction that you want to do. You know, take, for example, generating ARF and RMF files. It's a, it's a relatively newer uh, video of mine related to astronomy and astrophysics and NICER and things like that. Uh, I am not necessarily generating ARF and RMF files all that much. Again, you know, most of what I'm doing still is timing work. I like timing work. And so I'm maybe only doing spectrum analysis once or twice a month. For me, I don't necessarily care too much about messing with the different profiles and doing extremely precise data reduction with that because my work's not necessarily geared towards spectrum related things. Okay. It's mostly timing. And so I can't necessarily give a lot of guidance with regard to how you should go ahead and do things. You know, there was recently a comment. I, I can't, if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen, but I can't find it anymore. I, I, I think the person who, who wrote it has probably, have, probably deleted it. But it was a question along the lines of, can I study a magnetic field of a pulsar or a magnetar? I can't remember which, you know, which one it was, but can I study the magnetic field of one of those objects? uh, with nicer data. And I was like, well, of course you can. Uh, problem is, is that I don't really know the specifics of how to go about and do that. I can provide some suggestions of how you can go about doing it, but I can't necessarily give you a, you know, distinct answer on how to actually go about doing it. And that's ultimately just because of the nature of the work. One of the things I learned uh, throughout my entire process doing research and that I continue to learn is that, you know, we're, 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 the, the research work and the, the exploration that we're going through with neutron stars and pulsars and things like that, uh, our, our knowledge is very, very sparse for a lot of the things people are trying to study. It's very sparse or that information is non-existent. And so, you know, individuals can give you recommendations on how they might go about doing it, but they can't give you an answer and say, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way, because those really just don't exist. You know, all we can really say is, you know, at least for me, for example, all I can say is if you're doing timing work uh, with NICER, you should be doing a barycenter correction. If you're doing spectrum work, you probably don't want to do a barycenter correction. And then there's, all, you know, you go down the tree of, uh, okay, you need to generate your response files, you need to do grouping, you know, you can generate those response files with different profiles and all these other additional parameters. Not to mention, there's a whole bunch of optional parameters with NICER L2 that you can go ahead and do, uh, you know, again, and mess with depending on uh, what it, whatever it is you're trying to study or whatever it is you're trying to do. And so these video tutorials are always going to be incomplete. 
in 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 some way, and that that's because they're kind of meant to be that way, or just naturally they're going to be that way. They're meant to just be a stepping stone to give you a little bit of uh, baseline information or just supplemental information, uh, you know, from the original uh, data reduction guides and documentation, because that was something for me that I found pretty difficult is, is, you know, sometimes the way things were worded, you know, sometimes the way that things are described in the documentation was quite confusing. And once I figured it out, I realized, hey, you know, it it should maybe just be worded this way or maybe just be told that way. And so what I did is I just went ahead and I, I made a, a, a video tutorial and, and, and explained it in a different way. You know, people explain things in, in, in different ways. People learn things in different ways. And I think the more information that's out there, the better uh, or, or easier it will be for more people to learn how to do these different things. And so with regard to, uh, you know, questions like these or there's specific errors or specific issues that people are having, if I've never encountered that error or issue, I can't necessarily give you too much guidance as to what you should or should not do to fix it. Nor can I necessarily give you any recommendations of what to do with uh, data reduction or data analysis for working with other missions, or, or even you know if if you're working with a mission and trying to do something with a mission's data that I've never come across or thought about before. You know, again, I can provide the best recommendation I can, but ultimately, it's probably not going to be too terribly helpful if if you understand what I'm getting at. And I'll encourage everyone to keep asking these kinds of questions. I, I, I like seeing these questions because they make me even think about other things uh, also. And, you know, maybe if you ask a question that is closely related to something that I'm knowledgeable of, maybe you'll get lucky and I'll actually be able to help you out, um, you know, quite a bit. But for some of these, you need, you know, everyone needs to understand that I cannot... Uh, provide very good recommendations for things I'm just not knowledgeable of or things I haven't encountered before. So before this divulges just into a podcast of me uh, kind of ranting, not necessarily ranting, but uh, just rambling, uh, I'm going to try to cut it off here, uh, but I will want to answer this one last question. And and, and this question right here says, uh, you're the only person I found on the internet making these kinds of uh, guiding videos and all this stuff. Is there any public handle you have or I can send you a message or share my work if that's all right. Um, Twitter, mail, GitHub, they say all these things. Um, I am on Twitter. I will leave a link to that in the description down below. Bear in mind that that is a personal Twitter account of mine, and I post or retweet or like things that uh, are not strictly uh, astronomy and astrophysics related. So just bear that in mind. If you don't want to see some of my other interests or other things like that, um, that's probably not the best place to look for me. I am on GitHub, and that is linked in the description down below, as well as GitLab. Uh, those are always linked in the uh, computational linear algebra videos that I've been making recently and uh, that I will continue to make. Uh, not to mention that I am actually sharing, I will be sharing a, a number of uh, projects that I've been working on uh, as it pertains to NICER, and I, I would like to start making more astronomy and astrophysics videos. Again, not just strictly tutorials, but talking about, uh, you know, some of the things that I'm studying, and I want to share my work in, in that capacity. You know, again, I, I do this work out of interest uh, for myself and as an independent, and it's because it brings me happiness, it brings me enjoyment, and while I'm not necessarily super interested in publishing in an academic capacity, I think putting out the different things that I'm doing and putting out the different things that I'm finding uh, will spark a good conversation, and I think many of you will be interested in that. Uh, as far as mail goes, you can find that, or you might be able to find that on GitHub or GitLab, uh, but those are really the best places to reach out to me. One of the things I've thought about doing, and certainly let me know in the comments if you're interested, is making either a subreddit or a Discord server for us to kind of have conversations with this kind of stuff, or maybe even a Slack channel. I just don't really use Slack that much, so that's why I think Discord's probably a little bit better. You know, there are different ways to reach out to me, and I will, of course, link all those down below. Um, and, you know, I'll encourage you to do so. 
uh, the one thing I will just say is, you know, if, if you're not going to be respectful, I'm not going to respond back to you and I'll probably end up blocking you. Um, that just seems to be a continuous issue with a lot of individuals on the internet. Not necessarily, uh, I've not necessarily encountered that yet myself in, in too great a magnitude, but, uh, I know that is an ongoing issue. But yeah, the, this is just meant to be a, just a quick little discussion for me to answer uh, a, a few questions and comments. And, uh, you know, if, if you like these types of videos, certainly, of course, let me know and I will make more of them. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for watching uh, if you've made it this far. And I will hope to see you again uh, in one of my other videos. Uh, so thanks, everyone.